morning and welcome to Science in the AM. This is Joel Shadalka here. We're just measuring the cost of electrical energy. We reviewed a few things that we looked at already last week. And we just looked up on Sask Power's website, effective April 1st, 2023, what the price of electricity is for us. So this is for home. The basic monthly charge, 30 bucks, 29.99, and that's whether you use any power or not. If you hit stuck, you're going to have that. You can't, you can't alter that. What's in your control is the amount of energy you use, and that will affect your carbon tax and your energy charge. So the carbon tax is basically one dollar, or one cent, not even a dollar, per kilowatt hour. Compared to, it's practically 15 cents per kilowatt hour. And then you might be saying, and this is what I brought up before we started recording, we actually measure this in a kilowatt hour. Something like that. What's that? Well, we're going to figure something out and we might come back to it. Okay? So I said, don't copy this line. So here's what we're going to talk about. Don't jot everything down. Using electrical energy costs money and pollutes the environment. Okay, so there's a cost to it. However, some appliances are more expensive to run than others, and I think you understand that. That's because, come on in, I knew, don't, yeah, because somebody might be talking about it. Yeah, they're just joining us in time. That's because the more energy, uh, they need more energy to keep working. The amounts of electrical energy used depends on two things. The power of the appliance and the amount of time the appliance is working. Now, this makes sense, I think. You have something... Any ideas what appliances use a lot of energy, some of the most in your home? Not Now, I'm saying for if you use it for one hour, you use it the most. You might say there's some things in your house that use more because it's on all the time, but it doesn't use as much per hour. What do you think? Your oven actually, uh, people don't always think of that. It does, but you don't have your oven on 24 hours a day. If it is, it's an action, right? Okay, gas stove, in your case, isn't electric energy. It uses energy, but it's in the form of gas. Okay. I have a gas as well. But you have an oven that's electric. Yeah, that would use a lot, depending on the type, though, too. Old school ovens would use more. Anybody, uh, the oven itself wasn't. They used to have something called an induction stove. But induction is the element, not the oven. And when I say induction element, um, you know how there's the stove top, uh, the range they call that, some people, and stuff like this? That's the burners. You put your boiling water, frying pans on, stuff. And the induction one uses way less energy. There's no wasted heat energy. So that's a good thing. But it's the oven itself that is really the, the energy sucker compared to other things. But if you have gas, that's a difference. Another, any other major users of electricity, not that they're on all the time. Microwave actually is pretty small, I think. You can take a look at the ratings. But actually, though, it uses a fair chunk because you ever have your microwave on if you're in an older home and it pushes off a breaker if you had something else, a blender on at the same time in the kitchen? Maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. If you have an electric dryer, that's another one. And I'm bringing those two up because they actually use different plugins, if you've ever noticed. Eleven, and stuff, because they need that much 220 voltage and stuff like that. So those ones are major ones. But you don't leave your dryer on 24 hours either. Dishwasher has an electric drying element that would probably use more energy if you have the drying feature on. Yeah. Nolan, you're going to say something. If you have an electric yeah. heater, definitely an energy sucker. And sometimes you do because it's you know, sometimes your house is cozy warm, but then one room in particular needs a little extra blast of heat. Sometimes you have that. Air conditioners are huge suckers of electricity. Yes. Um, I know in the past, when I've looked at my electrical bills in the summer, they go up because of the, if I'm using air conditioners. And that depends on the month. Sometimes it's super hot, sometimes it isn't. So you guys are aware of things that would use more energy. Then... There's some things, like I have a, a clock radio that's on all the time. It uses very little electricity just for the uh, digits of my time to show up. A fridge, though, you need on. It, it's 
plugged in 24-7, but is it on? Do you ever hear your fridge cut in and out? So they're usually pretty quiet. But your fridge isn't, uh, the motor isn't running every minute. If your fridge is well insulated and you keep the door shut, like you ever, don't leave the fridge door open, you know what I mean, or whatever, because then it'll start cutting in more and stuff. If you, if you know what you need, you open up your fridge door and you shut it within 30 seconds. So. Sometimes you just stand there looking for the perfect snack though, right? That happens too. Anyways, your fridge does use a, a substantial amount of electricity because it cuts in and out as needed. Do you have, you know that little rubber seal? It's not rubber, but the seal around the door of the fridge? If that's leaking energy, then you're using more energy than you need. So fridges and freezers, those are something that we use a lot of it. Now, power is actually measured in something called watts, and I think you've all heard of watts. Still don't know what they are. Okay, well, it's the amount of energy per second that that's possibly using. And kilowatts. It's like meters and kilometers. Thousand. A kilo means a thousand. One kilowatt is a thousand watts. And of course, the other thing that the amount of electrical energy used is dependent on how long it's actually used. The longer it is, the more time it uses. Now, I told you not to copy this up. We'll consider this. Appliances normally have power ratings marked on them. If you know the power rating and length of time you, if you, a length of time you use the appliance, you can find the energy from this equation. Now this, I want you to write down. Electrical energy used equals power times time, and then put the unit underneath. So that's something I do want you to copy. Yeah. Giga. Yeah, what are gigs, guys? Well, it goes kilo, megs, and gigs. And they all go up by three zeros each time. A thousand, million. I'll pause this here and bring this up. I think so. As I mentioned, you needed to write this down, yeah? Yep. Oh! Anyways, electrical energy used, kilowatt hours is what they use on, uh, does it make sense? It's the multiplication of the kilowatts, the, the actual item used, how much energy it uses, times the time, hour. Now, of course, there's decimal hours and stuff used, like, it's done more like in three minutes and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, what, maybe I made a, okay, which, which word? Oh, normally. What do you guys think? Is that the normally way to spell normal? Normally. I think so. Okay. I, I'm not making any claims. I make spelling errors. But I think double L. Is that correct? No, just the box. Just the electrical oh, energy oh. equals. Delio, you knew that, right? I, no, just the formula. Okay. That's why I was just saying it doesn't take long. Okay. Okay. Take a memory snapshot. Electrical energy used equals power times time and put kilowatt in hours. Okay? Let's. Okay. Let's just get this going on. This I do want you to jot out and we'll try it. Suppose you have a TV that consumes at a rate of 200 watts. You watch it an average of 150 hours per month. You get billed by the month for electricity. Calculate the energy used. It's important you get this down on paper before we try. Down. You have to write this direction, okay? You don't have to write this direction down. We're just going to do this. So we were told that it consumes at a rate of 200 watts, not 200 kilowatts. You're more familiar with meters and kilometers. 
is a lot of meters a small amount of kilometers, or is a lot of meters a big amount of kilo, more kilometers? Which one is it? You see a meter stick right behind it. Which, like this is like, if I said 200 watts, 200 meters, is that going to be a lot of kilometers, or is that going to be a small amount of kilometers? Yeah, because you're looking at a meter right now, right? So 200 of these, I'm still not at a kilometer. Because we remember kilo means a thousand. Now, if you ask yourself this question, you know whether to multiply or divide. We want 200 watts to get bigger or smaller. Smaller, right? Because we're going to kilo. Just like 200 meters is a small amount of kilometers, 200 watts is a small amount of kilowatts. So I'm going to divide, and I'm going to write this down. And by the way, in my class manual, I have one thousand grams equal to two gram of words the same as meters or the same as ones. Okay? If you ever need a, uh, a reminder about kilos, I'll tell you it's a thousand. It's not a miss. By the way, centimeters and stuff like this meter. I always say somebody asks me about how many centimeters in a meter. I'll say, how many years in a century? How many? Hundred. I say, okay, I need your help. How many cents in a dollar? Hundred. So then I say, how many centimeters in a meter? You should say a hundred, right? That's just the cents prefix. Okay, back to kilo for a second. There's something I hope you're seeing. These are things actually that you need. The two hundred kilowatts. I'm going to put a W there. And I'm going to show my division as a fraction. I'm going to say that there's one kilowatt. I'm showing you this. You can just hit divide sign here. Per thousand watts. You guys, I, I'm teaching math nine. You guys know about fractions. What's weird though is that I'm kind of like getting into kind of, I wouldn't call it algebra, but I'm going to show you something. Maybe ahead of the game a bit on. There's something about algebra that say if you have the same thing on the top and the bottom, you can cancel them out. Maybe you've seen them, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to tell you. If I have watts on the top and watts on the bottom, they cancel out, and guess what I'm left with? And then I remember that every fraction can be thought of as a division problem. And I say 200. 200 times 1. Right? Because they're on the top. That's how we, I'm multiplying with fractions right now, actually, with my group. Dividing by the thousand, right? I could do this in my head. Did I really have to write this out like this? No, but I want to show you it's a skill for later. Okay. 200 divided by a thousand is really decimal. Back to I'm going to put the zeros behind it just because it's. I think it's 0.200. Now, if you want to use a calculator, by all means. Because sometimes people get screwed up on the decimal. I'll be like, okay, go ahead. Find that. No. Now you can plug that into your formula. Do you have to write that sentence down? No, but this is what we're doing. What formula are you saying? The one I had to write down. This formula. The energy used is equal to power times the time. I think we're told that it was 150 hours per month. So. I'm going to go with my energy used, electrical, electrical energy used, equal to the power of 200. I've got the power of 150 hours. Power for the hour. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, calculator. You can't do this in your head, but I don't care. Oh, well, this is a workout plan, 30. Kilowatt dot hour. That's what you used over the month. Not a part. Well, that's our next question. 
I'm going to add this on now. Yeah. Even though it wasn't asked, but Kelly had just said what I was going to add on. What's the cost? Previous question is just cost question. Like I think you make the sentence up in your head without writing it down. What is the cost? The cost will be. Let's start with that thirty kilowatt hour. Not a depreciation. Thirty kilowatt hour. Thirty kilowatt hour. Thirty Flip back to the first page in a second here, but I'm just writing this down. Ready? Okay. As mentioned before, the basic monthly charge is 30 bucks whether you use a lot of electricity or not, right? It's just being hitched up to the grid. That's 14.895 cents and then the 1.0125. Okay, I'm going to add those up right now. In my calculator, because you basically get charged both. I'm not going to keep them separate. So, let's go in there and get them done. All right, why don't I use that calculator? Okay. But I use that calculator. Turn it on. So, fourth thing, so that people can follow me when I do math. Okay. Plus 1.0125. Okay. That's 15.9075 cents per it's a cents, not dollars, per kilowatt hour. So when I was asking about how many cents in a cent of uh, every dollar, how many cents are you said years in a century, cents, hundred cents in a dollar. Looks like a lot. Fifteen cents ain't a Let's see how it adds up over the last semester. So I still have this on the calculator. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the way uh, the big boy is doing some math and science again with that fraction idea. I'm going to say that that's 15.9075 cents per kilowatt hour. So one kilowatt hour. I'm going to be able to get rid of that. Costs you. Did I put cents or dollars? Do you guys usually actually talk about cents or do you guys come out talking about dollars when you talk about prices? Well, nowadays, you can't buy nothing for a nickel, eh? Gosh, penny candies? Unheard of. Penny candies are the ones you find on the floor, and I'll tell you a penny. If you find them on the floor. If I drop any food, you can have them for a penny. Can't even have a penny, right? Let's talk about dollars. <coughs> so 15 cents is 0.15 dollars, right? I'm divided by 100. I'm doing that. So I'm going to put this around 0 0.15. And I'm going to write out the other thing, 9075. <coughs> Okay, that little break instead of calling it 15, I'm going to take that because it multiplies it. And it's a fraction. <coughs> when you multiply the number by a fraction, you multiply the top. It's called numerator for simple math. I can divide by the bottom. I divide by one, it doesn't change anything. But I have that there because I want to show, yeah, I got rid of kilowatt hours and I'm left with dollars. So I'm going to do that times the third. That I didn't change this one. I'm going to round it off to cents. Yeah, two there. Oh. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, that device will cost you 477 in the month. Little things add up. I don't know how computers work, man. It's just a mystery. It's the same calculator right here, right? Like slight variation, but you see the exact more or less. 
Well, it's not a smart board. I like smart boards better. But this one works. Anyways, that's kind of neat. And if you're really interested in that kind of stuff, get into engineering, electrical engineering, and stuff like this. If you really want to, if you're passionate about it, if you like mathematics, science and technology, engineers get paid very well for what they do. Honestly, out of this whole course, uh, my biggest thing is, is to get you introduced to three types of science that you can take in grade 12. Biology, chemistry, and physics. This is physics. I actually won't take any more about electricity to any great extent in high school. But if you're interested in and physics, and physics includes astronomy, not astrology, not like Leo and Virgo and stuff like that. That's astronomy. Astronomy, outer space. And there's a bit of a space unit here. You don't have activity. Um, physics includes electricity. Physics is tied into engineering because of forces and stuff like that. Speeds, distance, and time. That's that's physics. Physics is a lot of really interesting things. Physics is also how the inside of the atom is held together and the energy involved with that. Energy, stuff like that. That's physics. Chemistry is how atoms come together to form molecules or other compounds or other things, other molecules. And some people find that fascinating. And I taught chemistry every year until this year. So I've taught chemistry, how many years have we taught? 24 years. Anyway. Um, anyways. Chemistry is pretty interesting too. Biology, well, who isn't interested in being alive? I hope you all are. Anyways, life is biology, the science of life. And that's not just animals and humans are an animal. It's plants, bacteria, and stuff. And then the inner workings of how things work, uh, cells, right? We're going to talk about cells and how they reproduce and stuff like that this year. It's a little advertisement for all three types of sciences. Maybe you find out which ones, all of them, or none of them, that you're interested in. And hopefully you choose to take some in grade 12. You don't have to take grade 12 science, but there's careers that demand that you have some science background. If you're going into nursing, obviously you need some chemistry and biology. They all crisscross and, and they crisscross. They, they overlap with what they do. You have to understand chemistry and biology to understand medicine, right? And it makes sense. Um, physics and chemistry have a, a big tie over and stuff like this because of the inner workings of the atom and the energy involved. And stuff like that. Physics actually has a tie over with everything. It's sort of the central science that binds everything. That's enough of my advertisement. Okay, I'm going to jack this up. June 1st. Well, let's talk about this here. I'm going to update this, remember? I think that was April. I'm going to double check. Do I still have that up, though? Ah, uh, April 1st, 2023. As of April 1st. You don't have to write this down, but I'm just getting it down. Gas powers rates were, and I'm going to just round it off to 15.9, 15.91. Well, that's when you guys were born. Over your lifetime, it's gone up by five cents yeah, per kilowatt hour. Actually, that's pretty significant, though, because think of this. It was basically 10 to 15 or something like that. I erased it now, so I don't remember what it was. It's gone up. What is uh, 5 out of 15? Like, okay, as a fraction. A third, right? It was one third cheaper when you were born. But everything's cheaper when you're born because you hear parents and little grandparents are the worst. What how cheap things were when they were a kid and stuff like this. Times change, old man. I just say, if I start complaining like that, grow up, Shindelka. World's left you behind. So I'm not going to do that. Now, Stella, you sound like an old man. Talking about prices where they used to be. Okay, we already figured this out in success, and I got ahead of this, okay? So, in your textbook, which I said you should bring up, analyzing home electrical use, page 286, checkpoint number one. Let's just take a look at it quickly together.
So I'm waiting for you to turn to 285, 286. 285, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm only going to read through this. We're not going to do this exactly as is, but analyzing home electrical energy use on 285. Okay. Now the purpose is to identify energy use in your home by examining your devices. Okay. I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to read through this and we'll consider. Okay. Create a list of devices in your home that use electrical energy. Anything that has a plug-in uses it. Okay. Don't use anything, though, by batteries, because you're not paying SAS power for that. But if you have a battery charger, then. By the way, you pay for the battery energy in advance, and I can tell you it's more expensive than buying it from SAS power. You have a, oh, I don't have a battery. If you buy AA batteries, they're kind of pricey, eh? Like, if you have game controllers and stuff like this, go through the batteries, yeah, they cost money, right? Okay. Two, we're not going to do this, but we're going to think about it. Create a table for your electrical devices that includes columns for each device's average weekly usage. When the device is most used, you know, morning or whatever, you know, hair dryer is not used 24-7. Might only use it for three minutes every morning. Estimate electrical energy requirements of the devices, low, medium, high, add enough columns for all your devices, give your table a title. Delio's home or something like that. You know. Well, we're not doing it. Complete the table by estimating average use and predicting the energy requirement. Now, I think here's what we're going to talk about. And we're, if we're listening. You guys are a really good group, so I'm not making you write this down because I'm pretty convinced of this. What devices do you think you could reduce the use of? Now, we had talked about one of the, the first one that came up, I think, was Trey, that said oven, right? Or, or still, okay, anyway. Oven. Do you really think you overuse your oven, though? No. I don't think so. No. So that's not something you could reduce. You could reduce the use of air conditioning. How, though, and still remain comfortable? Oh, don't be comfortable. I want you to be comfortable. However, oh, here's something. Ice packs in your room. Where does the ice come from? They use electrical energy from the fridge to make the ice. So. Sure. Okay, let's be practical. Here's something, though, that you can do to reduce, and some families do this so they can. They already do it. If you leave your air conditioner on and it's cooling off overnight, meaning that if it's dipping below 18 degrees at night, you're better off usually shutting air conditioner off and open it up all the windows. Then you got to be smart about this, and when you first thing you wake up, you shut the windows, because tomorrow is going to be, this is, I'm talking July, not today. If the day is going to be hot, you capture all the cool energy, and your air conditioner off, it cools off nicely. Some days, some days if you have a heat streak, it does not cool off overnight. You can reduce air conditioning by opening windows at night, and opening every possible window, right? So there's an example, and that actually does save a lot of it. Anything else that comes into mind that you can save energy from? Okay. Washer? Do you overuse your washing machine? Okay. Yeah, your clothes look nice and clean. Keep them that way. I wouldn't say cut out washing, but the drying, some times of the year, could you? How could you cut out electrical energy usage if you have a dryer that uses electricity? Most do. Some are dead. What can you do in the summer? You could hang your clothes to dry. The volleyball clothes, especially. Yeah, volleyball clothes are more expensive to dry than most clothes. I don't know. Sure. Okay. Okay. Any other, th those are major energy suckers, that if opening windows at night instead of air conditioning, if, if you look at the forecast, you don't want it to warm up overnight either. And hanging laundry to dry, at least some big items and stuff like this. Jeans, for example, if you were drying jeans, they actually uh, last longer too if you dry them by uh, hanging. Um, 
these don't really get worn out too much now that you guys are older and not skidding out and getting grass stains and cold. Um, they wear out from the dryer more than anything. Uh, anyways, so it's, it's good for your clothing too. Some other things you might want to dry and stuff like this, whatever. But anyways, think of ways to cut electrical use. And this helps you out and saves you money in 10 years when you have your own bills and stuff. Yeah, thank you, young adult. Just turn it over. Okay. Is it okay? Now, just chatting this up today instead of the way it's written. Is there anything that you didn't realize before about energy use and cost? Electricity is expensive. Yeah, it is. Do you guys even have an idea what your parents pay for a, a month of electricity? Ask them. I don't think they'll mind, but ask them how much they pay for the electricity bill. Might be a hundred and fifty-ish dollars. It depends on the month because of air conditioning and stuff like this. And then in the winter, if you have if you have your cars outdoors, you might be plugging them in more often than if you have a garage. Um, things like that. So it varies by the month. This might be actually a, a slightly cheaper month because there's no air conditioning coming up, really, and. Uh, no major heat, and you don't need to plug in cars and stuff like this. So I pay my uh, electrical bills by the month, as in some people choose to have it averaged out over the year, equalized payment. I choose to have pay it by the month. Last question there. How do you think electrical energy use has changed since your parents were your age? I'm about some of your parents' age, too. So. When they, this is like 35 years ago and stuff like this, when they were your age, 30 between 30 and 35, 30 years ago, when was that? The 90s. Do you think we use more or less energy? I'm not even sure. Because you guys have more electrical devices, but phones and stuff like this that you recharge don't use it terrible amount of electricity, but I think the things that we used back then were not as efficient. So it's, I'm not sure. I would actually have to, and I don't have any old power bills from my parents 30 years ago. It's cheap. You know what I mean? Plus the power bill isn't itemized. I just get the grand total. I owe 150 bucks. You can see how many kilowatt hours. It doesn't say that the TV used this much and the oven used this much. Are you, do you think, it, but I can tell you as a province, we're using more electrical energy as time goes on. So, in general, we are, but we have more people. So, to flip the page to the checkpoint number one. This is what, this doesn't take too long. I know I used your time, there's five minutes left, but I think you can do it. <coughs> that following table. Calculate the cost, um, and they said using a utility charge of 9.7 cents per kilowatt hour, which was the price when you guys were born about you know, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, use something, cost per year. Now, if it gives you the hours per day that you use something on average, boy, vacuum cleaner, every day? You guys would be my dream kids if you used a vacuum every day. Hair dryer, maybe. Um, a quarter of an hour per day, 15 minutes. Some people don't use a hair dryer at all. So, you know, but this is just computer, four hours a day. Central air conditioning, 60 days per year, they give you that. So, um, 12 hours. So see what you can come up with for that because there's 365 days in a year, okay? We use 365. Come up with the annual cost per year of some of those items. Okay? That's your homework and the way we did it. So that's the four questions you want. Everybody clear on that? I'm going to stop recording. I was recording.